Thank you, Tamara, for the introduction. And thank you very, very much for inviting me. It is a great, great pleasure to join you all for this symposium. My presentation today is titled Global Change and Fish of the Amazon. Here, you have my email address and my Twitter. Do not hesitate in contacting me. When we talk about the Amazon, we must remember that the region began to be formed about 65 million years ago, when the Andes mountain began to rise, indicated in red here. Before that, we had a connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific oceans, passing here through the middle of the Amazon. Here. With the raising of the Andes, this connection was interrupted and the water system became directed to the Atlantic Ocean. The Amazon extend over all the northern countries of South America, most of, we, of which is within the Brazilian territory. The Amazon River, the main river channel uh, of this bioma, originates in Peruvian mountains, right here at the Nevado Mismi. From this place down to the Atlantic, the Amazon, uh, the Amazon travel, the Amazon travel 6,992 kilometers. When it reaches the Atlantic, it discharges 250,000 cubic meters per second. That represents 20% of all fresh water entering the oceans worldwide. Here, we have a cross section of the Amazon River at Obidus, that is the narrowest part of the river. Now, the, the cross section here on the top of this figure of the Mississippi River at Vicksburg in the United States. The Amazon is indeed a huge geographical area. In green here, is the map of the Brazilian Amazon. And in the yellow, superimposed, is the map of the Europe in the same, in the same scale. The biome is extremely dynamic with seasonal pools of flood and wet. It's very, very regular. During the flood, the aquatic system invades the forest, indicated here. And uh, during the, the web, lakes are formed like, like this one, and the main rivers are conformed in their central beds, located right here. The environmental diversity in the region is immense. Water of different colors are in the region's rivers, as is the, uh, in the Amazon River with its white water indicated here. The black water of the Rio Negro, and here's the contrasting uh, when, uh, when they meet in front of Manaus, and the clear water that's uh, typical of the Tapajós, of the Tapajós uh, River. The diverse and dynamic environment is home to more than 2,700 species of fish from the giant pirarucu indicated here to the diminute cardinal indicated here that is an ornamental fish used uh, by aquarists. By the way, the pirarucu is an obligatory breeder that drowns if it cannot go to the surface to breathe. This represents 18% of all freshwater fishes. It is also uh, home of 22% of 
of vascular plant species, 14% of birds, 9% of mammals, 8% of amphibians that inhabit the tropics. In parts of the Andes and Amazonian lowlands, a single gram of soil may contain more than 1,000 fungi species. Endemisms is very high in the Amazonian lowlands, with around 34% of mammals, 20% of birds, and 58% of freshwater fishes, which are found nowhere else on the world. But also, the Amazon uh, may hide many dangers, such as pathogenic viruses, bacteria, and fungi that can jump to humans that invade the forest. In short, the Amazon is an El Dorado of diversities, environmental diversity, biological diversity, and also cultural diversity. We have more than 300 different languages spoken in the Amazon. But we should remember that the Amazonia is not isolated from the rest of the world. Its own challenges are being amplified by global changes that, as we know, are strongly related to the anthropogenic production of carbon dioxide. Since the Industrial Revolution until today, the atmospheric concentration of this greenhouse gas has been continuously increasing. And over the last month, it reached 413 ppm of CO2. The challenging environmental condition in, is amplified in the Amazon by local actions involving deforestation, mining, and the opening of roads, among others. Approximately 17% of Amazonian forests have been converted to other land uses and at least an additional 17% have been degraded. Land use changes reinforce global climate changes, leading to positive feedback mechanisms that reduce forest resilience. They also increase draw, stress, and fire risk, cause higher tree mortality, turn the Amazon into a carbon source, and ultimately, would reach a tipping point where continuous forest can no longer exist and are replaced by degraded ecosystems. These cascading effects would have tremendous impact on climate and in turn, agriculture, hydropower generation, human health and well-being are degraded as well. Note that human-induced disturbances as wildfire, deforestation, and degradation and climate changes act synergistically, amplifying their impacts on biodiversity and ecosystem process. Several initiatives seek to produce robust information about the region, such as the long-term project called ADAPTA, which has as its mission to generate scientific information for public policies and new products and process for the benefit of man from the adaptive capacity of aquatic organisms of the Amazon facing natural and anthropogenic environmental changes. This project seeks to understand how different species respond to a common environmental challenge and how a single species can meet several different challenges with a focus on aquatic biota, environmental changes, and training and, and outreach. The consequences of increasing global change on the Amazonian waters are water, the warmer water will become warmer. The acidic water 
would become more acidic and the hypoxic water will get less dissolved, dissolved oxygen. Together, all these factors represent a big new challenge for the organisms of the aquatic biota of the Amazon. To study these effects, we built climate rules that reproduce the environmental scenario predicted by the by IPCC for the year 2100. We collect the information in real time in a forest fragment and transmit it to the computers in the lab that adjust the conditions in the climate rules. Fish hatched in this environment, for example, may show up to 40%, 40%, I would stress that, more skeletal deformities, such as lordosis, kyphosis, and scoliosis, among other deformations. Another project that is underway in our laboratory is related to value chains based on Amazonian biodiversity. It is a project that seeks to give robustness to biodiversity products, not for their extraction from nature, but for their production in controlled uh, environments. We know that the laws of biodiversity compromise food production and that the Amazon biome hides relevant information to improve agricultural productivity and the value chains from biodiversity would improve social inclusion and uh, income generation. Thus, the objective of this project is to identify critical factors to increase the competitiveness and sustainability of biodiversity-based value chains, aiming at social inclusion and better income for people living in the interior of the Amazonian, uh, Amazon bio. Some examples of these value chains are the Piranuku, fish that grows up 15 kilos over the first year of life. The tambaqui that survive low oxygen water by expanding the lower lid to collect the oxygen rich water from the top of the water column. And several fruits, as example, the acai, cacao, and Brazil nuts represented here in this slide. However, nothing will be possible without the robust information that only science and technology and education can provide. And of course, cooperation that is fundamental for the development of sustainability in, in the Amazon. And this is the reason that I'll leave here an invitation for you to come and uh, join us in this study of uh, uh, Amazon biodiversity and improving the use of the information from within the forest. Obrigado. Thank you. Deu lepsa, Allah.